Hey guys, we're looking at the Liv Rove E Plus electric bike. Liv is Giant's women's specific line of products. And I actually covered a very, very similar e bike recently called the Giant Rome E Plus. When it comes in a high step frame, if you want that, or a mid step frame, just like this, but the sizes are a little bit larger and some of the touch points are slightly different. One thing I noticed that really stood out to me is that. The Rove E Plus has bottle cage bosses there on the top tube, and the Rome E Plus did not. So that's kind of a cool little upgrade. It also has this rubberized slap guard at the back. Otherwise, they use the same motor, same battery pack, and largely the same components. And I'm mentioning this because maybe you just prefer the gloss black color versus this laurel, kind of a satin, almost a matte green finish. It's really pretty looking bike or you want those smaller frame sizes like this because you're a petite rider or maybe you're a young adult or a kid I actually think this would be a great platform for people like that if you're someone who's a little bit taller maybe it's a his and hers kind of a setup just keep in mind that you can get a very similar product from Giant. Giant is one of the world's largest bicycle manufacturers. It's like Trek, Giant, and Specialized. So you end up with dealers, a really good warranty, and you can get fitted and get serviced a little bit easier, but you do pay for that. So this is 2750 USD. So it is a little bit more expensive. Uh, a lot of the components are very nice. It's about 50 pounds, even for the extra small frame here, which kind of surprised me. My mom rides bicycles. And she's told me before that it's important for her bikes to be light so she feels in control. She could lift them up steps if she needs to or put the bike on her car rack. I was really hoping this live bike would be light uh, because it doesn't have fenders, doesn't have a rear rack or lights included. It's kind of bare bones. I was expecting like 45 pounds. The spring suspension fork is adding some of that weight and this is fairly basic. It's SR Suntour NEX. It has these plastic caps. If you remove those, you can adjust preload. So you can preload the spring for your body weight. And if you have that, a rack loaded up or something, I tend to leave it as is. And I've noticed that these plastic caps are they're kind of tricky to get off. You don't want to crack them. So, you know, there's, it's kind of basic. Another way you can add weight but also improve comfort is by replacing this 30.9 millimeter rigid seat post with a suspension post. And that gives you the full suspension feel, uh, but keep in mind it's going to raise your minimum saddle height by about three additional inches. So if you're someone who is trying to get that extra small frame and make it very easy to approach, that's going to be one of the other trade-offs. And then the battery pack. Even though it's not the highest capacity in the world, it's, it's like 400 watt hours, uh, which I would say 500 watt hours is kind of what I'm used to seeing in this generation of e-bikes. So lower capacity, but I think they're using cells that are less energy dense. So they tend to be heavier and maybe more affordable, you know, for, for what it's worth. The motor here, that's supposedly weighs like 7.4 pounds. So 7.2 pounds for the battery, 7.4 pounds on the motor roughly 50 pounds for the bike as you see here. One of the things I really like about it is that you can add so many accessories. You've got mounting points right here on the lowers of the suspension fork for adding a fender. You've got uh, fender mounting points at the back as well and then also rear rack mounting points. So there, there's just so much you can do with this thing. Imagine having like a rack on the back, putting like a child seat or panniers or trunk bag. There's a lot you can do and then you could put a light on the back of that or up front. One of the things I love about electric bikes is, you know, you've got this big rechargeable battery and I love to be able to run lights directly off of that. You may be able to wire lights in with the help of like a giant shop um, but otherwise you're just gonna end up with those little rechargeable lights or the ones where you kind of have the disposable batteries. I I'm not a huge fan of that, but I've got to say the light color is gonna stand out a little bit more at night. And I noticed on the rims and the tires, they've got like a semi-reflective kind of a gray pattern. So I, I think that's gonna help you stand out. This is a purpose-built electric bike, and you'll notice that many of the wires are internally routed through the frame. So it looks really clean. We've even got this plastic uh, protector for the bottom bracket there with the motor. But I'm, I'm noticing that the rims, the spokes, the hubs, the seat posts, all this stuff, it's black. It looks really nice. It all matches, and then there's a few accents here to sort of tie in the look. As far as hardware goes, you got quick release front and rear, which is kind of nice. I'm mentioning that because it's gonna make it easier to change flats, to do service, and I think most shops, they're gonna be able to work on this bike. So I like that. And I wanna talk a little bit more about the wheels here. So these are 700C, it's like a 28 inch 
diameter. They're giant specific tires. These are called the Crosscut Gravel 2. So they are gravel tires, which you can see here, 700 by 45C. So they're a little bit wider, gives you a larger contact patch, a little bit more comfort with that air volume. And then this tight tread pattern, that's gonna give you some, some grip if you are on a gravel trail. I would consider this kind of a light cross country model sort of designed to be used around town though if you want to it's sort of a go anywhere do anything platform the rims are actually very nice you can see that they have these reinforcement eyelets this little metal piece they're going to hold up better they won't crack if you have to true the wheels and tighten these over time the, dr the drivetrain itself is also pretty nice we have a 42 tooth steel chainring with an aluminum alloy guard so that's going to protect your pants or your dress if you're pedaling and just keep your clothes from touching that chain and getting greasy or getting snagged in the rear we have 11 to 42 tooth nine speed cassette pretty great and this is the micro shift advent derailleur you might have a shimano alivio derailleur sort of depends on supply chain their website says shimano but that's what i've got here in person and this derailleur is pretty nice it's got a little clutch system so you can lock it it's going to be a little bit tighter so the chain won't bounce around as much if you are going off-road but again this really nice rubberized slap guard protects the top and bottom if that chain does start bouncing around now there isn't a full guide up here on the chain ring so i think you could still drop the chain but I don't think it's going to happen very frequently unless this really gets out of tune or something like that. So just keep an eye on it. Get your tune-ups regularly. You should be fine. It was interesting to see that the handlebar length and the crank arms, they're going to be slightly different depending on the frame size you've got. So this is an extra small, and these are 165 millimeter instead of 170 not super impressed with the pedals. These are Welgo, just kind of basic cage pedals. And that outer portion is steel. So if that gets scratched up over time or if the bike tips, it can kind of get sharp and even bent in and then kind of rust. So I might replace those and giant dealers have a whole bunch of options to consider. And it comes with a little bell here too. So the trigger shifters, they work fine. There's like a little rubberized pad here. You can only shift one gear at a time on the micro shifts. Versus Shimano, I think you can shift multiple gears if you're going low, and I kind of like that, but the drive system here, it doesn't offer shift detection, so I, I do tend to ease off a little bit when I'm shifting gears, because otherwise it's me plus the motor putting a lot of strain into the chain and the derailleur, and you can just kind of bend the teeth and everything. Might as well talk about the motor while we're at it. So this is the Giant Sync Drive Core powered by Yamaha. So it's sort of a collaboration. It has six sensors. Back here, you can see a little magnet and then a reader. So it's measuring your rear wheel speed as well as pedal cadence, pedal torque. And then it's got like slope detection and accelerometer. So it's very dynamic, smooth, very quiet and efficient as well. This offers up to 50 Newton meters of torque which is kind of average these days. Some of the, the higher end mountain bike motors, they're giving you up to like 85 or 90 Newton meters of torque. So keep that in mind. Uh, still very effective, especially if you shift gears appropriately and you're in a lower gear. I mean, this thing can climb anything. In that case, you're not gonna get the same high RPM support, meaning if you're in a low gear and you're pedaling over 100 RPM, the motor might not be able to keep up. And again, that's a high performance thing. Probably not a huge consideration if you're just cruising around town. This gets up to 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour. It's a class one product. And for what it is, again, I think it does just fine. And then you're not getting a whole bunch of noise and you're also not drawing down that battery quite as quickly as with a really high performance motor. You'll notice that the crank arm and the pedals get pretty close to the charge port on the battery pack here. So keep that in mind if this is plugged in and the pedals get bumped like that. You just, you don't want it to get snagged. I like that they've got a, a locking cylinder up high. So we're gonna insert the key like this, twist, and then this thing just tips out to the side, which is very nice. That's what allows them to have this really low top tube, just pivots out to the side. 7.2 pounds. It's got that nice green cover to match the paint on the frame, um, but I think it's, it might be black underneath, so careful not to scratch this thing. The battery is rated at 36 volts, 11.3 amp hours, uh, 409 watt hours, and yeah, there's the interface at the bottom. They actually sell a little plastic cover piece that would protect this. So if you're driving, maybe you've got this on a car rack or you have to park the frame outside, you can just protect that, keep it nice and clean. And then here we have the charger, which is great. This is above average. It has a removable wall side. 
It's got the circular interface. It's kind of proprietary. And I should show you on the side of the battery pack here, it's got that rubber flap. So you can charge this easily on or off the frame. It weighs about 1.9 pounds. It's above average in terms of uh, charging speed. So this is a three amp charger. I'm usually seeing two amp. So, you know, it's got the little rubber feet and everything. It looks pretty good. It's not too large. And we have all the manuals and stuff in here. So like getting started and there's a suspension guide and just um, an overview booklet. The bike does not come with a kickstand. This costs like $25, $30 extra, but it has this tool-free adjustable length, which is really handy depending on the terrain you're parking the bike on. I actually used it here so the bike would be just perfect stood up straight. I like that the saddle has this handle built in and that it is different from the giant Rome E Plus version of the bike. I think it's women specific. And so just in terms of like the touch points and, and the body comfort of this, the reach and everything, the stem is a little bit different. You've got some uh, spacers here too, so you can raise or lower it. The reach just isn't quite as far. I love these locking ergonomic grips. They're not gonna twist on you. They feel very secure, very comfortable. And then the brakes. These are Tektro hydraulic disc brakes two, maybe three finger levers, and they are adjustable reach. You can bring them in if you have smaller hands. I think that's really great. And they, they just give you a lot of power. Hydraulic disc brakes are wonderful for people who, you know, maybe you have the smaller hands or you just don't wanna pull quite as hard. They tend to be very consistent, the front and the rear, whereas mechanical brakes, a lot of times the rear brake requires more hand effort from the right brake lever. And in this case, we have 160 millimeter rotor in the back and 180 up front. So the larger rotor, a lot of your stopping power ends up going to that front brake because weight shifts forward as you stop. And that greater surface area is gonna cool easier and you've got a better mechanical advantage by having a larger rotor. Both of these have dual piston calipers. So it's, it's a good setup. Uh, it's working very effectively and I think it's appropriate for this bike. So now I'm gonna jump into the, the display here. To turn the bike on, we're gonna press this little power button, it comes to life very quickly. And in fact, there's five LEDs on the right. They represent how full the battery is. So kind of got 20% steps, very similar to this little power readout on the battery itself, which works even if that's off the bikes. So you can see how full it is. It's very handy. So it's not quite as precise as a percentage, but that is available in the app. And then we have a dot in the center, and that's actually for lights that would be wired into the bike. But remember, this bike doesn't actually come with lights, so you can turn that off by holding the light button for a couple seconds. And then the LEDs get even brighter, okay? So I think that's kind of cool. This thing has like a dimming function that when the lights are on, the LEDs are a little bit dimmer. And they're not gonna ruin your night vision. And then it starts out in smart assist, which is sort of like the middle. And that means it's gonna rely more on your pedal torque, like how hard you're pedaling and probably the slope and accelerometer to give you what it thinks is the appropriate amount of power. Of course, you can press the up or down buttons here and they're very intuitive. You can kind of feel through it. You don't have to look down. If you go down, it, it takes you from smart assist and walks you back down to eco or off. You could just ride this as a regular bike if you wanted to, um, but otherwise, go all the way up to the highest level of assist for the most power, kind of the zippiest feel. You're gonna use the battery faster that way though. And if you wanna go back to smart assist, just hold that down button for a couple seconds and you're back. So that's really nice. There's also a walk assist here. So there's a little button on the bottom. If we press that, you'll see this little walking motion and then you have to hold the up button and it gets going and it really zips that first bit of energy it, it it feels kind of fast and i think it might be dependent on which gear you've chosen that might dictate you know how fast walk mode actually is there might be a little bit of room for improvement kind of refining that or it might be up to you being in sort of a intermediate gear versus a high gear so i've powered the bike on over here and then i activated my mobile phone and i've got the bluetooth turned on i already added the bike it was very easy it recognized it right away you can plan a ride so you can actually find a destination and then this will act as gps you can begin a ride press play and it'll track you as you ride it'll show how fast you're going how far you've gone how long you've been riding and this is this is a really cool option if you mounted the phone up here on the handlebar so you can track your rides and you can see those later in your history. So I was out riding earlier and I can see where I was and what I did. And then I can go to the settings, some of my personal information. I think the coolest part of the app is from the home screen, you can go to e-bike setup 
and do motor tuning. So each of the five levels of assist, you can adjust how much power you're getting. And in the highest level, Sport Plus, it's automatically set to 300%. So you're getting significantly more power back from the motor than you're putting in. You can also do a system check and get the bike detailed. Okay, so I'm definitely too big for this bike. I'm not gonna get full leg extension, but I must say it's it's very satisfying. It definitely feels uh, peppy enough and powerful enough, especially in the lower gears. I'm in smart assist. I think that's great. It's very dynamic. I'm just gonna pedal along. Very nice. So again, there's not a whole lot you can see as far as how the motor's performing, and you really can't hear it a whole lot. The big thing I hear is that rocks occasionally getting caught in the tire tread and kicked up into the frame. Um, I've ridden this a little bit on asphalt as well, and it's just one of the quietest motors. Very responsive because of those six sensors we talked about, and the bike feels good. I mean, it's, it's stable enough. We've got those taller wheels, 700C, 28 inch, so you have a lower attack angle and it just smooths right over bumps and cracks and it just, it feels nice. I don't feel like it's vibrating too much. I think the combination of tires and, and the geometry of the frame are just, are really nice. One of the other things I've noticed is that because it has kind of a limited RPM range, meaning Basically, I need to shift to higher gears to hit those higher top speeds because the motor just, once it reaches 100 RPM, it can't really go faster. It still has power, but it, it doesn't have a lot of speed. So I'm going to shift some gears and get a little bit more speed. Yeah, right away I can feel it. A lot more speed happening. To give you a better sense of the motor noise so i'm in the highest level of assist i'm going to pedal along Very nice, it's pretty peppy. So I was down here riding the bike for fun, uh, just on that, that ridge trail and I met Vance and this is like the Alouette River Club or what are you doing? This is Alouette Recreation and Wildlife Club. Okay, you have a website? Yes I do. And you rent, I see the kayaks, we yeah. saw a river otter earlier, this place is wonderful. Yeah, we have a lot of wildlife, you know, we do the um, wildlife release because it's safe um, and, you know, there's really good access to the water. Well, your gear is so clean, you have the life jackets and everything. Uh, you've rented most of them, there's only two there. So I just wanted to be friendly and, you know, when you're out on a bike, you discover wonderful things like this. You're a great guy and so I hope people can come check this out sometime. Thanks for your help. Well, I hope they do too. <laughs> Cheers. A lot of friendly people out here today, guys. I, I hope you had fun hanging out with me looking at the rove e plus from live overall i'm pretty impressed with the bike I, obviously there are a few areas where i feel like it could be improved slightly but when it comes back to having a dealer getting the right size having support over the the long run and just the quality of the yamaha drive system and the other components here i feel like it's pretty great i'm a big fan of the hydraulic discs in particular for the full write-up on this and the giant rome e plus which is basically the same bike in black and some larger sizes check out electricbikereview.com there's a comparison tool so you can look at them back to back and um, a whole bunch of other bikes that fit this sort of around town light trail riding and there's a forum so you can talk to other people and get some tips about which racks and fenders uh, work best with these so i love you guys ride safe and we'll see you next time